All right, today on Everyday HDR, I'm going to go ahead and talk about non-destructive image retouching. Because in the past, I used to do a lot of things that were really haphazard to my images, like auto levels and auto curves and auto color balance. And then I'd save the image and I'd call it a day. And then I realized that I was doing a lot more harm than I was doing good if I would just take the time to learn some things in Photoshop. So I'm going to teach you some of the things that I've learned that will help you drastically with your images. So the first thing I want to get myself in the habit of every time I open up an image that I'm about to edit is to press Control J on the background layer and that's going to duplicate the layer so that any editing I do to that layer to this image won't affect the original background and you can even just go ahead and take your eyeball and turn off the background layer if you'd like so that you know that you're not touching that one. Okay so in the past I used to go image adjustments levels to do my levels adjustments or I would do control L or control shift L which makes automatic levels and then you're telling Photoshop to do it for you but now I don't do that I like to control my images so I'm gonna go to just for uh, conversation's sake show you what I used to do in the past let's do that so now what I've done is I've done a, a levels adjustment on the file I'm trying to work with and if I wanted to go back and fix that, I could never do it. So let's say uh, I do another couple layers and I don't like what's going on with the levels now. Well, too bad. You can't go back. So it's always good to go down into your layers palette and go to the adjustments section and press levels and do it that way because it gives you a, a layer now for your levels that's an editable layer. You can mask it. You can work with it however which way you'd like to. So I'm going to go ahead and brighten this image up a little bit. Alright, so now tools. There's a lot of tools on this sidebar, and many of them have the ability to work on a new layer and not necessarily the layer that you're working on, like the, the clone stamp. You know, in the past, what I would do to clone out these blurry birds in the background was go right to this layer, um, click on an area around it, and then clone stamp it out. Well, I've since learned that I can do those adjustments on another layer by looking at the tools and selecting the right adjustment for them. So I'm going to go back by pressing Control Z, make a new layer, and if you look up here it says you're sampling from the current layer. So if I were to sample on this layer right now and then try to stamp out, it's not going to do anything because I am currently selected on layer 2 which has nothing in it. But if I go to Align Sample and then click on Current and Below, or All Layers, but I'm going to go to current and below because I only want it to affect anything that's on this layer and anything below it. Press current and below, press alt right here, and now I can blur out my bird. Same thing goes for the spot healing brush. Sample all layers, have that checked, and when you sample all layers and go to the spot healing brush, click on the other bird, it heals it. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this um, below stamps so that I know that these were clone stamps so if you want to see what happened there it basically ha I have a new layer that's all it's selected and you can see what's, what's happened there and I typically prefer a blurred edge on any of my stamping so that it blends a little bit easier so with my healing brush tool it looks like I need to go ahead and make that a softer edge brush but I can live with that for now. So then let's look at uh, like this area right here. You see how that wall is yellow and then it gets a little brownish? I want all of that to blend and the best way I see to do that is to do a color balance. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select that area that I want fixed first and I'm going to put a buffer around it, a nice little healthy buffer around it so I'm not selecting exactly where I want to fix and then I'm going to go to color balance and see what it's done is it's masked out everything else around that so that the only thing I'm actually affecting is that area that I selected so I can go to highlights and I can make it more yellow and now you see how it's starting to blend in with the background a little bit better if I wanted a little bit of red to that give a little bit of brownness to it I can do that too and then to get rid of those hard edges that I've got going on, I can go to my brush. I can make that brush smaller by pressing the left bracket button. 
and I can start painting out those areas. And all of this is non-destructive. I'm not doing anything to anything below. That's the original image right there. And then as you're looking at this image, you'll start to see a couple of... And these areas happen in the HDR process. For some reason, the Photomatix processor did not like this swatch right here. Probably due to some highlights and some sh shadowing issues. And uh, at the time, I was probably in auto white balance because it was a long day of shooting. So I can always fix it when I get home. And that's usually my mindset. So up here is another little piece that probably should match the rest of it. See it? So what I can do is I can paint in white on this area and start to bring some of that color back in that I used the color balance for. And some right there too. And it looks like it's all over the place. So that's another tool. So of the tools there are, are stamp like tools. I've covered the healing brush. Um spot healing brush, sorry. And uh, the healing brush works the same way. So if you select those things the healing brush will do the exact same thing and the stamp tool. But one of the things I also want to cover is the blur tool. Because one of the things that happens in the HDR process as well is when you zoom into some of these highlighted areas, you start to see these little 8-bit looking graphics from like King's Quest 3 or something like that. I know I probably just dated myself there. So what I'm going to do is make another layer and I'm going to call this one blur. And then I can go to my blur tool and I can set this to, uh, let's, let's do lighten. And I'm going to set this to about 40, maybe 35%. And what you're going to see is I'm just going to hit these edges that are all kind of pixelated and blur those in because those should be some nice blurred tones, especially with how far away they are. Now, you can do this on your actual layer, but. I don't want to do that because number one I'm teaching you non-destructive ways and number two I don't do that stuff anymore because that's destructive so if I uncheck all these images you can see that all I'm doing is I'm working on this layer right here I'm not actually affecting any of the layers underneath it and I can paint those areas in now you might be thinking why are you zoomed into 415 percent and my answer is because I'm anal and this is how I fix my images if you can suffice without doing this then go right ahead but this is all about teaching you how to better your images not to be complacent with them and I can do this and I can talk all day to you about this but I won't do that so one more thing I want to get into and uh, that's with this swatch down here um, for some reason I've got this blur going on down here and I want to fix it I don't like how this sand is a different color than that sand and what I could do is I can go in and I can clone stamp all this stuff but if you go through and you clone stamp all this area over to here, you get some muddy areas, especially if you're working with something small. It's just clone stamp over clone stamp over clone stamp starts to make the area look muddy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to go to this layer. And I'm going to select that area that I don't really like too much. And then what I'm going to do is slide over here a little bit and sample this area. And I'm just going to press Control C and then go back over to this area and press Control D to get rid of my selection and then Control V. So now what I've got is a sampling of that area, which is nice and fresh and clean with the sand. And then I'm just going to bring it right over here and place it exactly where I want it. And then I can rotate that by pressing Control T to make it exact. And then I can slide it up. And if you ever see that you're getting a little magnet thing going on here, it's because Photoshop sees something underneath that it wants to connect that to. So if you hold control, you can freely move that area around and not have to worry about Photoshop trying to make the decision for you. And then you can put a mask on it. 
and you can start blurring out those hard edges. So that it blends really nice and easy with everything else. And now we don't have that cloudiness back there that I didn't like at all. So that's pretty much your, your start on non-destructive elements. So what you need to keep in mind is if you're going to continue editing this image, which I would probably continue editing further, but it would be repeats of what I've already showed you. The main thing to keep in mind is that when you're using tools, use them in non-destructive manner. Sample all layers, create a new layer, and use that tool. And then when you're going to do adjustments, go down to the adjustments pal palette, click on the adjustment you want to do, and don't do anything destructive. So then when you save this, save it as a PSD so that all of your layers will be saved with the image. And then when you want to save something for the web, you can save it for the web off of that PSD as a JPEG or a TIFF or a GIF or however you want to save it. Alright, thanks for watching guys.